Printing United is uh, actually a quite amazing place. This is only the second one that takes place because of the COVID has been canceled. So the last one was in 2019. In the meanwhile, a lot of things has happened. One of the things that we have followed with a particular interest is, of course, um, when uh, ESCO sold off the Kongsberg division and handed over the keys to you, Stuart, right? Yeah, um, that's right. That's right. Good to see you again. Yeah, great to see you, Morton. Um, we are here at a big booth. I mean, just to mention a few of your endeavors in that period. I mean, you got your uh, your own brand identity. Yeah. You acquired Multicam. Correct. You have a huge booth here. Yeah. Yeah, and exactly. Look where we are now, right? This is the, the Kongsberg Super Booth. Yeah. All the products, large booth, all the experts here as well. A great location here at Printers United for people to come, learn about Kongsberg Multicam products, applications, and really help their own businesses moving forward. I know that we have been talking about it a bit before, but I'm still a little bit uh, curious because when you're in a transform transformation process, I think uh, when, we, when we met the first time, we spoke that, that you are, you're, you're thriving in change, yeah. right? Yeah. Is yeah. it a constant change or you also have to flatten out a little bit on the, on the change uh, for yeah, Kongsberg? I, I, think, I think it's um, a good analogy for me is like, we're writing the Kongsberg story yeah. and not every chapter can contain so much change. Some of, the, some of the chapters need to have some stabilizing times where you develop the characters and the narrative. And because that, and that, somebody asked me recently, I said, yeah, we're on like chapter three of the Kongsberg story. And there's another 40 chapters of this book to go. But, but exactly right, you can't be constant change. You do need some stability and to really start working on some of the core the core parts of the business. When you look at, uh, at this booth, for example, and you see, I think, first of all, uh, compliments to your branding uh, strategy. Yeah. I think it looks really cool. Yeah. Uh, it also seems that, you know, uh, when we met the last time at FESPA, it was like, there was like Kongsberg and there was Multicam. Yes. But now it seems starting to get more and more integrated. Yes. Is that also how you see it? Or? Yeah, it is. I mean, and congratulations to the Kongsberg marketing team. I mean, it is an amazing booth here. Really, nice. really impactful here. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, some of the things take time, but we are integrating as two businesses now. You know, there is one IT department now, one HR department. We're coming together as business, as, as one business. And one of the things that I consciously did when we acquired Multicam is not to really force them together in a short period of time. It's too disruptive. So we've really taken a much more um, calmer approach to doing this. So we've integrated many of the aspects of the business behind the scenes, which customers don't see, what, see while retaining the brand identity that's been important for us. When I think about the work you have had and you have currently, I can't help think about that did you at all have time to develop business? I mean, just, you know, organizing your own company, yeah. getting brands, getting the values aligned with the people you employ yeah. and, you know, all those kind of market appreciations and all that. Do you at, at all have time to also go to market? Yeah, no, we do. I mean, fortunately, and very fortunately for me, we have a great team, whether it's the lead of product management and strategy or marketing or IT, very talented people who are also running departments of talented people. So. Yes, we do have time to develop um, our go-to-market strategy, new products, visions for the future, um, doing customer um, uh, exercises and workshops with them as well. So, of course, when we first left and were stood up as a standalone business, it's very busy just getting the business stabilized. But we've really, in the last year, moved on to really um, developing the business going forward. I can't help thinking about maybe you have moved so far in that year's time that you have almost forgot. I mean, you have your legacy and you have your roots, but at some point you need to cut the, the ties to the, yeah. the past, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and I don't think about that anymore. You're, yeah. you're absolutely right. I would have said in sort of uh, January, February of this year, it felt like it was five years since we'd left when Isn't it was it? only really a year. Isn't that right. amazing? It, it, it is truly amazing. Yeah. But it's because, and again, I don't want to talk about it, look at the people, look at what we have here. Yeah. We've moved so far. We're going to talk to, uh, you know, uh, you have a new American, uh, yes. um, yeah. uh, what is uh, Matt? Uh, Matt Thackeray, yeah. yes. We're going to talk to him, but we're also going to see uh, the machines in action, of course. Yes. Um, if you look at Kongsberg and the deliverables you have to your customer, is. Uh, is, uh, I mean, the, 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 the quality of the products, the, uh, the, the productivity of yeah. things like that, uh, how easy is it to get that message across to the market? Because, I mean, 
ob obviously based in Europe. You have now an American yeah. market, uh, the Asian market, the African yeah. market. How is how are the markets? Uh, They're different, yeah. right? They're really different. Yeah. And I think we you spoke a little bit about it. In one sorry to interrupt, you said that yes. that it's a level of automation depends very much on the markets, uh, salary levels, uh, correct. Uh, correct readiness for digital sort yes. of that. And of course, COVID. Yeah. COVID meant that factories were thinned out on the number of people, yeah. so customers needed automation. But you really saw that in the Americas and Western Europe. Um, but going back to your original point there, one of the things that we pride ourselves on is really talking to customers. Because a customer in Sao Paulo really has different needs to a customer in London or in Las Vegas. So us un really understanding what those customer needs are, what challenges they have, what potential bottlenecks they have in production, really leads us in where, where do we go next with innovation. And today you can see great performing products, but we're never satisfied. We want faster, we want easier, we want more, we want the customers to have a better um, ROI with their investments as well. So we constantly want to push that, that, that boundary. But I also think that you mentioned to me earlier that you know, if uh, now we are uh, at, a, at a trade show for the printing industry, but basically the technology that you provide can be used in other uh, right. industries as well, right? I right. Mean, yeah. and, and that's part of the value proposition, what, what customers come to, to, to the Kongsberg family for, right? Yeah. You know, you don't want to buy a router just to do plexiglass. You want to do ACM, you want to do MDF, you know, different boards on it. But the same with the Kongsberg, uh, a table here like the C64. You can do banners, you can do corrugated, you know, you can do vinyl letters if you want to do it. And that's the appeal of buying a Kongsberg, that it's not a one-trick horse, right? You can do many things with it, and it allows customers to, to, make, to make an offering towards their end user much more diverse. But where do you see the, the near-time uh, market and, uh, and development in, in uh, Kongsberg products and offerings? Well, and and Multicam, of course, I mean, yeah. under, under one umbrella. Yeah, under one umbrella, yeah, I think what we, there's many facets to this, Morton. We're, we're looking at really the materials that go into the machine now. We're really taking that on board. Are we using sustainable materials? In the future, can a customer bring a machine back as a trade-in and we recycle the machines ourselves? So the sustainability in the production really important, side, yeah? It's really yeah. important to us. Where are the materials coming from? We're looking from our suppliers now to, 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 to procure materials that maybe have already been recycled once already and include them for a third time in our machine. I mean, so that you've got that aspect of it, but also we want usability. Is the machi are the machines as easy as possible to set up? Is it very quick to set up? Um, you know, all of the, so that whole spectrum of what a customer needs from us, we're trying to capture. And this sets, this sets the journey for us for the next decade, where we're gonna take the technology. I was thinking uh, the, the split between you and ESCO, it has been, at a, I think it's been an advantage for both companies actually, because yes. it, it yeah. seems that you have the freedom to choose among more software vendors, and they have yeah. the opportunity to work with more hardware solutions, but it, ba it basically seems to be a separation, a friendly separation sure. that has strengthened both companies, yeah, right? It is, but we still work together. We yeah. still have joint customers. Yeah. You know, we've got customers that we've been working with for 20 years that still have ESCO and Kongsberg yeah. products, and will continue to have ESCO and Kongsberg products. And I think that's great. I mean, we, 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 it was really, um, I think I described it to you before, it's like two siblings going off for different careers. We didn't fall out. We're just going on different journeys now. You've changed clothes as well, right? Yeah, yeah. right. Colorized right. Yeah, we have a different right? clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, when uh, when uh, you got into becoming your own company, there was also a venture capital uh, investor. Uh, in, yeah, open gate capital. Yes. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. I was just wondering that uh, when a company invests in in, in Kongsberg, it must be because they can see a huge potential right. in the company. Right. Is that something that you can already feel now? Or uh, yes, yeah. no, uh, absolutely. I mean, we are. Um, much further down our, our, our planning than we thought we would be. We, you know, and, and I think uh, OpenGate, as our now owners, can see the potential that we've delivered now and the next steps that we're going to deliver as well. I mean, there's literally so many, so many stories to be told in the next chapters of the Kongsberg book. Yeah. And uh, if we look at the comp uh, customers, just as a last uh, segment of this uh, yeah. chat here, when you look at the customers, is that is that a still like a growing market, or do you still that is more like a consolidation where you take market shares from each other, or how do you see that? It's a bit of both. I think it depends where you are. I think you know we ha we have our competitors in North America and Europe. I think it's um, the, there is some um, trying to to win market share against each other, but the markets are still growing. I mean, we operate heavily in the packaging market, and of course the digitization of the packaging market 
is really in its infancy. We've got probably a decade or more before digital print and digital technologies are really fully adopted in the packaging market. So that means that you are, in a way, you have to be quite busy uh, innovating and, yeah. and also go to market because basically this is a very lucrative market and it needs to have like a good uh, share of that market as soon yeah. as you can, right? Yeah, correct. And so we're developing our next products to really capture that, both on the packaging and the print and sign market as well. But then look at the multicam products. That, that operates in a different world. You, know, you can cut with a plasma, you can cut you know, uh, ferrous steel with it, right? I mean, you were cutting different things. Wood, you know, we're not talking about small pieces of plexiglass. You can have you know, 25 millimeters plexiglass cut, cut with a laser. Crazy, really I mean? diversify yeah. 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 places that, we, that the Kongsberg family operates now. I mean, uh, next time I see you, it will be at, uh, I guess, in, yes. uh, in Japan, right? Yeah, looking forward to it. And yeah. uh, we, on camera, I promise you, we will go to your, uh, your, your distributor okay. and make a Japanese kind of... Uh, we should do it. That could be we fun. We should do it, yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah, definitely. Thank Martin, you. a pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for supporting yeah. our endeavors here. Yeah, thank you. Okay.